tap in. Tap, tap, tap in collective. This is God's major oracle. I'm major oracle. Um, if you're new here, please subscribe. Uh, give me a like if you like. Share this video on all social media platforms. You never know who you help. Leave me a comment. Um, hit the notification bell to all so you know when I upload. I try to upload daily. I'm a oracle intuitive reader. I play meditation music, copyright free in the background. Uh, this is an 18 plus channel, not intended for minors. So YouTube trigger warning because we never really know what messages we're going to get. But today we're going to be tapping into my last video I uploaded. All my videos are connected somehow, some way. So today we're going to be talking about 12 laws of karma. See, a lot of people like to do spell work. A lot of people like to throw people the evil eye. And most of the time it's a female hating on a, another female. It has to do with a guy or a relationship or something karmic -y. See, a lot of people live by man's law, you know, um, but they forget God's law. And a lot of people, uh, um, you could say half of the people that are in tuned with what's going on in the world, they try to follow God's law, which is the Ten Commandments. But a lot of people forget about karma's law. Karma's 12 laws. So this has to do with like my last video. Apply these laws to your daily to your daily life. In order to shift your life, you have to apply these laws to your daily life. Law number one is the great law, sometimes referred to as the law of cause and effect. What you put out, you get back. And it goes back to, like, the planet. Are you giving back to the planet more than what you're taking? Are you giving to the relationship you're in more than what you're taking? Is someone giving to your relationship with them more than what they're taking? It's cause and effect. What you do can cause something, and it can and will affect you. The law of creation. You are the co-creator. Take actions to manifest your dreams. Don't wait for things to magically happen. Okay, let's say you're a person that walks around, and you're like, oh, I'm blessed, I'm this and that. And let's say you're a person, no, I got bad luck. What are you doing to change that? Like, you could be more blessed. You could have good luck. What are you doing to change that? God said, I'll help those that help themselves. Prayer is a lot. Prayer means a lot. But what are you doing as of actions behind that prayer? So that's law number two, the law of creation. What are you creating? What are you helping someone else to create? The, the number three is the law of humility. Be humble enough to accept that you that your current reality is a product of your past thoughts and actions. This goes back to, are you thinking positively? And if you, let's say you have a bad day and it's not so going so well. What were your thoughts of that day? What were you thinking about? Were you trying to make your day better by thinking positively? You don't tell yourself, oh, this is just another interview I'm going to. I probably won't get it. See, you're already going in there with a negative frame of mind. And whatever you're thinking, your body's going to show it. So you slouch in the interview. And the interviewer sees this. They're going to take it all like this person's lazy. It has to do with the way you're thinking and the way you're acting. 
how your day goes about. So if you wake up high and mighty and you wake up happy, your day is going to go forth just like that. But if you wake up with a negative mindset, how you think your day is going to go? A lot of people I say, turn on the music. Wake up happy. Say a prayer. Get something that will get you into your mojo for the day. Whatever happened yesterday, leave it there. Focus on what's happening ahead of you. That's the law of humility. Be humble. The law of growth, no, number four. Accept what you cannot change or control and focus on what you can. This is the law of personal growth. Focus on yourself. Let's say, for example, you got these karmic axes focusing on you. If that person chose to do something better than just focus on you all day, there may be their relationship with that person, your past person, would be working out. But no, these people want to wake up and stalk you. That's the law of growth. How grown is that person? Do you want to be like that person? Of course not, right? So it's about growing, learning, learning, looking for the positive things in life rather than focusing on the karmic -y things. That's the law of growth. The law of responsibility, number five. You are a product of your choice. You are a project, product of the choices you make and the thoughts you focus on. You become what you think about most of the time. That's the, the law of responsibility. How responsible are you? Are you taking responsibility for the choices you've made? for the actions you have done like why are you and your ex over what did you cause in the relationship for it to be over and most of you can say oh i ain't do nothing but see you fed off of what that person was doing now if you took responsibility and you stand in your power you won't even worry about what this person is doing these are why these are karmics. They got to stay in the past, most of them. Not unless they've grown. If a person has done their shadow work and they've grown, yeah, go ahead, by all means, give them another chance. But see, talk is cheap. To, for me personally, you have to show me. Don't talk. I want to see it. The law of connection. Everything in your life is connected. Every person, everything is connected to you in some way. See, and this has to do with my last video too. Everything is connected. Everyone is connected. See, people think, okay, oh, I signed a soul contract with my twin flame. But no, you've signed a soul contract with everyone you come across, even the mailman. Even myself, you signed a contract with me in the ethers that you will be here today listening to this today. You just don't remember because that's a, another realm. But these things that happen in your life is causing an awakening. And this has to do with the law of connection. Everything and anything, it could be the littlest thing, it's all connected. Every person, place, or thing, it just, it goes back to also, you ever had the feeling deja vu? Everything is connected in this life and was also once connected in the past. So even these karmic ex were meant to come cross you. They're either a blessing or a lesson in your life. You take it as it resonates. This is the law of focus, number seven. It is impossible to focus on two things at once. Focus on higher values like love and peace and to prevent lower thoughts like jealousy and anger. If you walk around being a hater all day, how do you expect to be happy? 
And this is for the haters, only for the haters. Stop hating. Go love, go be happy. This is for the karmics I'm speaking to, uh, the cross watchers, the stalkers. Go do something with your life and stop worrying about the other person. Focus on you. Don't focus on them. And this is for the collective. Focus on yourself. Don't fuck, focus, excuse me, don't focus on your um, karmic ex. The law of giving and hospitality without selfless nature. Number eight, spiritual growth is impossible. Give to the things you believe in. What do you believe in, collective? Do you believe in yourself? I hope so. I believe in you. Let's say you see someone without a shirt and you walk in by them and you got your gym bag, you got an extra shirt. It won't be nothing to take that shirt and pass it to the next man, but it will be everything for the next man. And you never know if that person is an angel in disguise. Because you know the devil wore Prada. Now, hospitality is a big thing. If you see someone thirsty, it goes a long way. That's working on your karma. Sometimes, believe it or not, a cup of water to a person that is in thirsty and you don't know what medical condition, they're thirsty, here you go, here's some water. Sometimes that one cup of water could clear out a whole generation of karmic debts that we have from the past life. What we're talking about here is karma. The 12 laws of karma. We're talking about the little things you can do to fix and clean out your karma. And not only your karma, your karma from your past ancestors. And they will be grateful. And for your future children and your children's children. Next up is number nine, the law of here and now. Embrace the present. Let go of the past. Grudges and resentments. How long are you going to hate checks? <laughs> That's how I'm going to look at it. How long? Oh, y'all not been together for six months, three months, a year, two years, five years, ten years. How long are you going to hold on to that grudge? No, I'll wait for real. How long? You that This goes back to move on and move forward. Don't stay stuck in the past. Sometimes we got to leave these karmic ex where they stand in. And I promise you, if you leave someone where they stand in and they karmic I promise you, go back in 10 years, they still where you left them while you've elevated. It's the law of here and now. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do here? Forget about back then. What's going on now? Tell me about now. People like to say, oh, but I did this. I did that. Don't tell me about what you did. Tell me about what you're doing for yourself, for your future, to elevate yourself. The law of change, number 10. Doing the same thing over and over again will get you the same results. To get different results, change the same thing. Thing. Like, oh, why keep going through this with her? Or why keep going through this with him? Change the him and change the her. And watch you not go through that again. It's the law of change. You got to accept change. And that goes back to the serenity prayer. Um, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I know I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Change. You need to bring forth change into your life, collective. The law of patience and reward, number 11. Be consistent with your karmic deeds. Long-term rewards come from accumulating good karma. You want good things to com come forth in your life, collective? You have to do good things. And it starts with a cup of water. 
A little act of kindness goes a long way. Don't do it for the reward. Do it because you want to do it. I see a lot of YouTubers, they, they do good deeds, yeah. But then they want to record it and get merit from the world and clout and money. You think that good deed you just did was for YouTube or God? I'll wait. It's the law of patience and reward. The next up is the law of significance and inspiration, number 12. We are all born for a purpose. The gifts you share can have a powerful impact on the world. And it's like what I'm doing right now. I'm sharing my gift with you. See, a lot of people follow the Ten Commandments. We learn about the Ten Commandments. They fail to teach us about the 12 laws of karma. Now you got God's law and you got man's law. We follow man's law because, hey, we don't want to go to jail. And we follow the Ten Commandments because, hey, we want to go to heaven. But how about growth in, in the physical, in the 3D, and in the spiritual, in the 5D world? The law of significance and inspiration. What are you doing today to teach the world, to heal the world? And you could start small. You could start with the kids around your neighborhood that need guidance. You see, you a grown man and you see a bunch of little boys and they all being disrespectful to a young woman, young little girl. Check them. Teach them. Guide them. That's what they need. You tell them you don't speak to a female like that. Let's say you see a young girl and she's showing a little too much. And she's getting a lot of attention from creepy guys. Speak to her. Guide her. Talk to her. Ask her why. See, a lot of these kids are out here running wild with no real family structure. Or toxic or karmic. You as the collective, you're here because you have divinity in you. Each one teach one, right? So that's the 12 laws of karma. The great law, the law of creation, the law of humility, the law of growth, the law of responsibility, the law of connection, the law of focus, the law of giving and hospitality, the law of here and now, the law of change, the law of patience and reward, the law of significance and inspiration. Those are the 12 laws of karma. I suggest you look it up and like I, I first card out, apply these laws daily to your life and watch your life change. Watch your life shift. Watch it change for the better. And do me a favor too. Since you're here, you're older, you're learning, teach this to one young person. At least one young person. Teach one young person about the 12 laws of karma. Because it's like we're forgetting our teachings. Us as elders to this new school era, we got to teach them it's more than about sneakers and rap. Now we have, I have some sayings, some quotes about what karma says. Karma says, close the window that hurts you, no matter how beautiful the view is. Karma says, silence is the best answer for all questions. Smiling is the best reaction in every situation. Karma says, cheating is a choice, not a mistake. And loyalty is a responsibility and not a choice. Karma says, Listen to people when they are angry because that is when the real truth comes out. 
Karma says, don't be upset when people reject you. Nice things are rejected all the time by people that can't afford them. Karma says, never get too attached to someone because attachment leads you to expectations and expectations lead you to disappointment. Karma says, don't be too happy when people say they love you and care for you. The real question is, until when? Because just like seasons, so do people change. Now, when I was doing this, I looked at the clock. It said 2023. And that's a sign of divine protection and guidance. So at this moment, take this as a sign, collective, that you are being protected by the divine and you are also being guided by the divine. You was guided to this video. This is to remind you of the 12 laws of karma. Now, karma ain't a pretty thing. Let me tell you, let me tell you. Karma could be very scary. But you could change your karma if you follow these 12 laws and if you teach these 12 laws you can change your karma now me i rather roll with my dharma dharma is the opposite of karma dharma is good deeds you're on the right path karma means bad deeds you're on the wrong path you don't want that karma and another song i was getting um because i'm also a music reader is Beanie Siegel. Feel it in the air. So go check this song out. It's very powerful. Now I was going to pull out some of my karma cards. And just see what we get. Oh, that was a lot, but I'm going to take it. Okay, we got pay for the person behind you at the drive through So we're working on our good karma here. Our dharma. Volunteer to read or play games with the elderly people at a nursing home. Or it could even be the elders in your family. Go visit an elder in your family. Go play games. Go help them cook. Take them out to the in front of the building. Something so so basic. Take them to the park. Join a literacy program and help children and adults to learn to read. Or just educate, period. Like what I'm telling you right now. Educate someone on the 12 laws of karma. Compliment a stranger and tell someone you don't know how much you like their jacket or their purse. Open up a door. Say hello to someone. Say good morning. Say Ask someone how you been today. Tell some, a random person you look really nice in that sweater. Mail a postcard to a family member you haven't seen in a while. Or give them a phone call. Send them an email. There's so many ways nowadays. But we should still teach kids how to use the mailbox though. Because <laughs> I've came across young people that they don't even know what a mailbox is. You put mail in there. Oh, I'll just DM. But you know what? It's something special when you get something in the mail. It's something intimate. It's like back in the days when you used to get Christmas cards in the mail. When in line at a store, let the person behind you go in front. I do that all the time. Especially when I see they don't have that many groceries. I feel bad. For them having to wait just to pay for the bread. Take a walk or a run for a cause. 
or take someone's dog on a walk for them or take someone's trash out a, na a neighbor you know that is struggling at the moment there's so many things you can do to help people out to work on your karma like this one says make a friend with someone at school send a coloring book coloring books to a children's hospital get a haircut and donate the hair to locks of love praise a co-worker or a friend ask someone to give you a donation in your name instead of buying you a gift for your birthday Fill an expired parking meter. A little change goes a long way to make someone's day. Call a family member that tells them how and tell them how much you love them and appreciate them. Be a designated driver for a group of friends. And see this card? I always say, why not? You could be saving your friend's life, or you could be save, saving a pedestrian's life. Leave or put change in the vending machine coin. Register yourself to be an organ donor. Give flowers to a random person on the street. Reach out on social media to old teachers from the past. Tell them just how much they were a positive influence in your life. Donate toys to local holiday toy drive. Send flowers to random patients at the hospital. A little bit goes a long way, collective. Now, thank you for watching. Give me a subscribe. Give me a like if you like. Hit that notification bell. Leave in the comment section um what others could do to work on their karma what you think others could do you know the little things um don't forget to yeah subscribe i already said that thank you very much for watching i appreciate you all um let me see if i have anything else here just in case i'll be coming out with a channel message video next Okay, collective, may your neighbors respect you, trouble neglect you, angels protect you, and heaven accept you. And as always, it's time to tap, tap, tap out, collective. Peace be on to you.